Hi, good evening everybody. I hope we are well and have had a good day. I've had a good day. I learned about uh, the weather today and the, the good time to go to the beach. Must I talk louder or it's me? Can you hear now? <laughs> it's better. Okay, good. Um, yes. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, I wanted to continue today about uh, on walking in righteousness. Can everybody hear now still? I, I don't really want to shout. Um, and just, just a recap on how that... To receive righteousness, basically it depends on receiving righteousness by faith. And in order to receive what the Lord has done for us, it's essential that we put down our own efforts, we put down our own righteousness, we put down the things that we are, are holding on to, we put down even the things that we're going to the Lord for, so that primarily we're going to Him for righteousness, so that He can give us righteousness. And we saw that the righteousness that we are given is not dependent on, on what we do. It's rather a gift. And from that basis, we are able to see what it means to, to walk in righteousness because we can't receive righteousness and then want to walk in righteousness sort of in the spirit of law, if you know what I mean. We know about the fruits of the Spirit. We're going to go into the fruits of the Spirit. But you see, the fruits of the Spirit, we can't even produce them in ourselves. <laughs> And we, we can make walking in the Spirit like a principle. We can make walking in the Spirit like a law to ourselves. We, it's actually, we're just approaching something different with the same attitude of, of trying to perform, you know. I suppose walking under in the Spirit of the law is we're trying to show something on the outside. In other words, to manufacture righteousness of our own. And sometimes we can even try to walk in righteousness, which will end up producing the fruits of the Spirit in us, where we try to manufacture them ourselves. You know, and so today I, I want to look a little bit at, at walking in righteousness and what this walk of righteousness is and what it produces in us and what we can expect on that walk so that we are, are able to get to the end of, of where the Lord wants to, to take us. You know, so um, just to start, Romans chapter 8 verse 4. The word of the Lord says this. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. That tells us a lot that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, those who don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So although Christ has fulfilled the law of righteousness for us, although he has given us this gift of righteousness, although he has, we are as, we are literally the righteousness that we have because it's his, it's equal to his. We are equally as righteous as Christ is. He still wants us to walk in righteousness. And um, to walk in righteousness, we can see from this verse that, you know, there are two, there are two conflicting, there are two, two ways. There are two conflicting ways. We can either walk in the flesh or walk in the spirit. Shall we read that verse again? That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So for us to be able to walk in righteousness, we need to see what it means to walk in the spirit. And walking in the spirit, my brothers and my sisters, number one, <laughs> means that we are going to not be walking in the flesh. The opposite in Christian terms of walking in the spirit is walking in the flesh. It's, it's as simple as that. We're either going to walk in the spirit or we're going to walk in the flesh. And if we want to walk in righteousness, we need to be able to, to walk in the spirit. It's clear? Okay, so from there, um, I'm, wanting, I'm wanting us to read Romans chapter 6 verse 13.
Romans chapter 6, verse 13. And the word of the Lord says this. It says, Do not present your members as your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as as your members as instruments of of righteousness to God. You know, the, 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 the scripture is very clear. You know, it says, do not present your members as instruments of sin. So whilst the righteousness that we've received is a, is a gift, there is an attitude of heart that the Lord is looking for in us to cooperate with Him and to walk in the way that He wants us to walk. That's for our part. You know, we, we can't make ourselves more righteous but we can have an attitude that is either going to help us or to hinder us in our walk with the Lord. And he talks about us being instruments, and instruments that can be presented for sin, or instruments that can be presented to the Lord for righteousness. So in other words, it's in our hands, you know, as to how we are going to walk. We have received the gift of righteousness, and with that righteousness, we'll go and we'll, we'll see that there are different ways that we can walk. But the point... I think that the Lord wants us to see from this verse is that there is a presentation of ourselves before the Lord that He's looking for from each one of us. So although we've received this free gift of righteousness, there is this attitude of heart where we are ready to present ourselves before the Lord as instruments. You know, we are familiar with the verse, present yourself as a living sacrifice. It's speaking the same language where the Lord is looking for a presentation of our lives as an offering to Him. You know, an instrument and an offering, it's, 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 a, it's a little bit the same thing. And, you know, if you think of an instrument, the original language talks about a tool, like a tool that you use. I see Rian's got his tools. Each tool there has a purpose. It's designed in a specific way. It's there to do a specific task. Same as us, my brothers and sisters, where we are instruments. Each instrument has a particular place. There's a guitar, there's a drum, if we talk about instruments. And whether you talk about tools or instruments, an instrument doesn't play itself. A tool doesn't use itself. An instrument is played by somebody else. It plays something that somebody else wants it to play. It makes something that somebody else wants it to make if it's a tool. And so the Lord is asking us to present ourselves as instruments of righteousness to the hands of the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's that attitude of heart that the Lord wants us to go forward with in walking in righteousness. Yes, it's a free gift, but there's an attitude of heart that is looking for. And this attitude of heart, we'll see, it will come out as an attitude of sacrifice, my brothers and sisters. Not an attitude of sacrifice to be righteous, but an attitude of sacrifice to present ourselves as living sacrifices to the Lord, so that He can do what He needs to do in us to equip us and play us in tune, so to speak, of His righteousness in us, a particular purpose for each one of us. And hallelujah, thank you for that. Because you see, that's still not an effort. Inside of that, there's no effort. Inside of that, it's the same thing. It's by grace through faith. It's by grace through faith that we offer up our lives as living sacrifices to say, Lord, use this instrument as you will. Hallelujah. Amen. So from there, we are going to move to Galatians chapter 5. Book of Galatians chapter 5. And the interesting thing is, is that the book of Galatians was, was written by the Apostle Paul and it was written to people who had received their righteousness by faith and were now wanting to live as Christians effectively. And that, that is us. It's, it's us. We've received our righteousness by faith and he uh, was walking them through this receiving righteousness by faith, and then putting before them how they needed to learn to walk in righteousness. And let us read from Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 2. And, you know, before we start reading this passage, we've already seen that there are two, there are, there are, there are two things at play here to walk in righteousness, or maybe three. There's walking in the Spirit, is walking in the flesh. And to fulfill the law of righteousness, we need to present our we need to present ourselves 
as living sacrifices, so to speak, to be able to walk in the Spirit. And walking in the Spirit is the opposite of walking in the flesh. And as we go into this passage, we're going to see that, the, the, I, I think that this passage is showing us that the flesh has two faces, so to speak. The flesh has a face of legalism, and the flesh has a face of license. It's both. And we're going to see as we go through this passage how to be able to walk in righteousness, the, it, it's like the Lord wants us to find now that we are free from the law and we are free from the curse of, of, of the law and that we receive this righteousness. It's like on, on, on the left, there's a valley of legalism that we can easily slip into and we can try to walk in righteousness legalistically. <coughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? And for us as Christians, it's easy, even in the gospel that we hear, to be legalistic with how we receive and how we respond to the message of the cross. It's easy to make the message of the cross into another form of religion. And it's a formula, exactly, a principle, the principle of the cross, rather than the message of the cross, the gospel of the cross. And it becomes very hard. <laughs> and on the other side, there's a valley, and, and, and that valley is called do whatever I want. You hear what I'm saying? So, so now we've been given this freedom, and we, know, we, we can either try to walk in legalism, trying to walk righteously, righteous, righteously, or we go the other way into license, where now we've, we've received the grace of God and we can just do whatever we want. And neither of them is the plan of the Lord for us, my brothers and sisters. There's a way in the middle, and that way in the middle, if you can, if you can picture it, it it's, it's like a pass that goes through the valley of legalism and the valley of license and it's i can give it two names which is the same thing it's called walking in the spirit or it's called the way of the cross it's it's the same thing it's the same thing my brothers and sisters and that's the place that i am that's where i wanted to start from before we go into the, into this passage galatians chapter 5 verse 1 to 5 this is this is relevant to, to us who want to walk in righteousness. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled with the yoke of bondage. What does that mean to us as gospel Christians? We've received the gospel, and we need to make sure that we are not being entangled again with the yoke of bondage where we begin to live the message of the cross as a principle. We just fall back into that same spirit. And now we've got the spirit of the law with the gospel. It's, it's, it's probably even tied to chains, to be honest. And uh, indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he's a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become, you have become estranged from Christ who attempt to be justified the law, and you have, you, you have, you have uh, fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And so this, this is a warning to us as Christians. To not to fall into the trap of legalism in trying to walk in righteousness. To fall back into, 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 into routines and principles. What could this look like for us? It can, it, it can have different faces. It, became, it can become the principle of the gospel. We somehow it's we are, are are living a language, if I can say it like that, and we have taken the freedom of that Christ has given us and formed it into a set of rules and principles. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It can take other forms as well, and these forms, they the things that I'm going to say next, are. You've got to hear the heart in which I'm saying it, because I'm not saying it. I'm not saying these are bad things. So before I say what I'm going to say next, I want you to put the word obligation in front of everything I say, because it's 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 it's, it's, it's somehow the burden of obligation. If you feel that you need to do these things to walk in righteousness, somehow we've we've we, we've fallen into this trap of legalism. You know, to walk in righteousness, if you feel that you are obliged, hear me, please, guys. I know I can get into trouble for this. But if you feel you're obliged to read your Bible, obliged to walk in righteousness, we are sliding down that slope again. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
Do you remember what I said? Obliged. Obliged. It's good to read your Bible. Please, let's read our Bible. But let's not put the obligation upon ourselves. If, if we feel we're obliged in anything to act a certain way, we are falling down that trap of legalism. You know, I grew up in a, in a, in a how can I say, with the, with the routine and the principle that if you wanted to grow as, Christ, as a Christian, you needed to do these things. You needed to read your Bible, you pray, and do your quiet time. It's good, if you, it's good to do those things. But if that becomes a law, if that becomes an obligation, we, we, are, we are adding to what Christ has done. Where the Galatians, they wanted to add to what Christ had done by being circumcised. We want to add to what Christ has done by creating our own principles where we need to add to the finished work of Christ. So it's not what we are doing, but it's the attitude behind why we are doing it. And so those, those, are, those are aspects where we can, we, can, we can fall into the trap of, of, of legalism where we start to walk by principles. Let's look at the other side of the coin, which is the trap of, of, of license. Uh, chapter 5, verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So it's very clear from this passage that the Apostle Paul is showing us of two dangers when we're coming to walk in, when we've received this gift of righteousness, either falling into the trap of walking in legalism or basically walking in the flesh to using this freedom to just do whatever we want. You hear what I'm saying? So there, 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 there is a walk that is through the middle of these two dangers, my brothers and sisters, and it's, it's, it's the walk of the Spirit. And, you know, one thing that, that, that really strikes me is if, you, if we read the words of Jesus, he says, does Jesus not say that love fulfills the law? And how did love fulfill the law? Christ crucified is love, my brothers and my sisters. There is no measure of love that is greater than Jesus Christ crucified. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. How can I say that? Is, I, I can say it because, because of this. I have a wife and I have a son. And this is a this is a this this is true. This this happened to me. Where it was as if the Lord asked me, Do you love your wife? And I said to the Lord, Yes, I love my wife. And it was then as if the Lord said to me, Is there anything that you wouldn't do for your wife? Would you give your life for your wife? And I said, Yes, I would give my life for my wife. Then it was as if the Lord asked me, do you, love, do you love your son? Yes, Lord, I love my son. And then it was as if he said, would you give the life of your son to show your wife how much you love her? And I said, no, Lord. Truthfully, I wouldn't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. It's, 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 it's beyond my limits, if you know what I mean. So you see, Christ crucified that is a great love, eh? That is a great love. To give your own life is a price. But to give the life of your son, that's a greater price than giving your own life, eh? For those of you who have kids, you will know what I'm talking about. Balin and Natalie soon, even now, you'll know, you know? Could you give the life of that son? for your wife or that life of your son for for your husband yet alone your husband or your wife but someone who is not even worthy of that there's no greater love than that so you see christ crucified fulfilled the law and that's why he said love fulfills the law so if we want to fulfill the law of righteousness we are told through the word of god that it it will it, it will be it will be not fulfilling the lust of the flesh but it will be walking in the spirit and walking in the Spirit, my brothers and sisters, it will fulfill the law of love. It is how we fulfill the law of love. It's not through a principle of we can do this and we can do that and we can do this. No, no, that will be legalism. It will be the right things, but it will be the wrong way, if you understand what I'm saying. We'd have gone back into that valley that we actually came out of. 
and, and, and you see, this, this, this is why the way of the cross is so fundamentally vital to us as Christians. Because walking in the Spirit and walking the road of the cross is the same thing, my brothers and my sisters. It's, it, it, it's not two different things. It is the same thing. And if we are wanting to walk, to learn how to walk in the Spirit, it means that the Lord, in order to teach us how to not walk in the, in, in, in the flesh, needs to deal with our flesh so that we can walk in the Spirit. That's how He teaches us, you see. So it's not us trying not to walk in the flesh. It's not us trying to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. But it's rather us bringing our lives in surrender so that the Lord can deal with our flesh so that we can walk in the Spirit. You hear what I'm saying? And my... I'm counting three brothers and sisters. <laughs> that is how we walk in righteousness. It's, it's, it's by allowing the Lord to deal with our lives. That's how we walk in righteousness. Otherwise, it's just, it's just self-righteousness again. It's the same thing. You hear what I'm saying? So let's continue to read from the book of Galatians. And from verse 16 i say walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh very clear if you want to not walk in this flesh we need to walk in the spirit it tells us of a battle for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to no, to one another so you, you do not do the things that you wish clear too clear there's a contrast they are not the same the spirit and the flesh are not the same they're different they're at loggerheads they're at conflict with one another there's a they're different there's a tension it's tearing in different directions but if you are led by if you are led by the spirit you are not under excuse me you're not under the law the next section of this passage it goes and it talks about two things it talks about the works of the flesh and then it talks about the fruit of the spirit Let's read them. The works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbirth of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, as I also did in times past, those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? Is it clear? Those who practice these things. Sometimes we find ourselves doing these things. Does that mean you'll not inherit the kingdom of God? I believe that it says those who practice these things as in do them to become better. You know, in the days where we practiced soccer or practice rugby or you know what I mean? That becomes our lifestyle. We do it to become better. You hear what I'm saying? It doesn't mean if we fall in these things from time to time, as we all do, how many of us are excluded from these things? Even as Christians? We don't want to practice these things. But the fruit of the Spirit. So it talks about the works of the flesh. And then it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Self-control. Against such there is no law. So in other words, saying this, this is how we need to walk. <coughs> and then it says that those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its with its passions and desires. So at this point, all we know is what we must not walk in and what we should walk in. And if we stop just there, we are still we, we still we've still not arrived. All we now is have a knowledge of what we should not be and a knowledge of what we should be. And, but then Paul, he says something very, very crucial. It's, it's the key. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its, with its passions and desires. And even if we stop at that point, we are still not there. Because the problem is you can't crucify your flesh. You can't crucify your flesh. The Bible tells that by the Spirit we put to death the deeds of the flesh. You and I, we can't crucify our flesh. You see, if we think we can crucify our flesh, we've just gone down that same valley. We're applying the cross as a principle. You see? So, it's, it's a work of the Spirit that puts to death the flesh 
not you who crucify the flesh. Our action, so to speak, is an attitude to present ourselves as living sacrifices. So what we do is we present ourselves to the Lord as an offering. But you yourself, you can't bring death to your flesh. If you could bring death to your flesh, you wouldn't need the Lord and you wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wouldn't have been sent to us because you and I would be capable of doing it ourselves. And you know what? There'd be no difference at that point between the gospel of the cross and motivation, self-motivation. You hear what I'm saying? It's just would just be a different way of wrapping the same thing. And we mustn't make that mistake as Christians to believe that we in our own strength can crucify our flesh. Because I don't think we can crucify our flesh. What we can do is we offer our, our bodies as living sacrifices to Him. So we present them so that those instruments that we present can be, can be used by the Lord in the way that He wants to. But you can't bring death to your flesh. How? What's the difference between bringing death to your flesh and self-discipline? There's no difference. It's actually, you've, we've just fallen down into a principle again. We, we've gone down, in, we, we, we've gone into legalism again. In fact, we, we, we're almost in a way going back to where we came from. Just with a different, a different ref, point of reference. Do, do, do you hear what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters? So it's, it's, it's by the Spirit that... We, we put to death the, the, the deeds of the flesh. Or the, the Spirit puts to death the deeds of the flesh. And that's why Paul is saying this. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. So let's, let's go to the next step and, and to, see, to, see, to see what it means. To see how it works. To see now how we walk in righteousness from this, from this, from this framework. Because you see, you can know the fruits. You can know the fruits but you can't manufacture the fruits. You can't manufacture the fruits, my brothers and sisters. You can know that you need to take up your cross and follow Jesus. And it's right. It's 100% right. But knowing it and having these fruits formed in us are two different things. You see, we can't produce them. Even though we know what the fruits of the Spirit is, how do you manufacture them? You can't. All you can do is try in your own efforts to manufacture these fruits. In other words, you can try to be patient. But hurry up, please. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You can try to be kind, but there's always a limit. There's always a limit. You get to your limit. And you see, that's the point. is your limit. It's my limit. Each of us has a limit. Each one of us has a natural propensity to be patient or impatient. It might depend on many factors. But you see, that's, that's not of the Spirit now. That's of us as individuals. You see what I mean? It would be our personalities. It could be the chemical composition of our bodies. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's deeper than that. So Paul introduces us when he, when, when, when he speaks about those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires and understanding that we can't manufacture the fruits, we can't manufacture the fruits, but rather it's the flesh that needs to die. It's the flesh that needs to die. So if we want to manifest the fruits of the Spirit, it's not through our efforts. It's through our presenting of our bodies as living sacrifices for Jesus to deal with our flesh so that the fruits of the Spirit can be manifest. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible talks about it in a, in, in a different way. Sometimes it says, put off the old and put on the new. In other words, we've got to put off the old man and put on the new man. It's another way of saying we need to present our bodies as living sacrifices so that the Lord can deal with our flesh. The Lord can deal with our flesh. And if the Lord is dealing with our flesh, my brothers, my sisters, we can say the cross is at work. If I am dealing with my flesh, it's me that's dealing with my flesh. It's my own efforts that are dealing with my flesh. It's my own motivation that's dealing with my flesh. It's my own self-discipline that's dealing with my flesh. I've just got some good words to, to put it inside. But if the Lord is dealing with my flesh, that's another story. That is another story. Now we are talking about working, walking in righteousness. So you see why I started out by presenting ourselves. 
as these instruments to the Lord. And so that, that, that is the key. It becomes presenting ourselves as instruments to the Lord so that He can start to deal with our flesh. Now we're talking about walking in righteousness. We are not walking in righteousness if the Lord is not dealing with our flesh. We are walking back into the valley of legalism. We're walking in a different type of religion if it's not the Lord that is doing it. And that, that is, is, is where we're going to go next. And so, um, so what, what do we want? Let's turn to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. This is what we want. This is what we want for our lives. This is what we want a righteous life to look like. This is what we want the fruits of righteousness to look like. Paul describes it like this. He says, clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh that is in the heart. Hallelujah, that's very different. So that's not us, but that is the work of the Spirit of God who is writing on us. You know, in the, on the, in, in the Old Covenant, it, it was righteousness written on tablets of stone. But in the New Covenant, it's righteous, righteousness written on the tablets of our hearts. In other words, He is making us. He's given us a gift of righteousness. And now He's, he's, he's causing us to, to, to manifest the fruits of the Spirit or live righteously. In other words, we're being sanctified. Do you hear what I'm saying? And that is a work that happens on the inside. It's work that's happened on the inside by the work of the Spirit of God on the inside, not because of what I'm doing. Hallelujah. It's not me. It is the Lord. What my work is to do is just to surrender, is to offer my life. It's, it's, it's this, you know, it's, it's just a continuation of how we started. By grace through faith, it's the same thing. It's by grace through faith. Lord, bring these fruits. It's, it's just the same. It's just a continuation of the same thing. Not to go backwards into something where we, where we came from. So that, that's what we want. So let's read chapter 3, verse 18. But we all with unveiled face. In other words, we now who, who understand and see this. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So this walking in, in righteousness, it is a process of transformation that is happening. And you know what? why this is such good news? It's because it is a process. It hasn't happened just like that. Yes, the work of Christ is finished. It's a finished work of Christ. But you and I, although we've received the finished work of Christ, in, in terms of that gift of righteousness, you and I are not a finished work. It's so clear we're not a finished work. There's so much that the Lord needs to deal with in each one of our lives. And, and, and that's what the Christian walk is once we've been saved. It's, it's this process of transformation where we are being transformed into the image of Christ. Another way we say, another way, a very simple way of saying it is that we are becoming more like Jesus. We are becoming more like Jesus because of what He is doing in us and how He is transforming us, not because of what we are doing. Do you hear what I'm saying? One is religion that's actually bringing nothing in the Spirit and the other one is a walk of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So, where do we go from, from there? So, it is, it is, it's clear that these fruits of the Spirit that Paul was talking about in Galatians, you and I can't manufacture them, and it's in fact the work of God, the Spirit of God, that is producing them. And what we're going to read now is, next, is how He produces them. In other words, the way that He does it, is, it, it it's the how He does it. And for that, if we just go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to read from verse 7. How he does this. How does the Lord deal with our flesh? Because it's through dealing with our flesh that the fruits of the Spirit are produced in our lives. 
is through dealing with our flesh. And so now our walk of righteousness is this. It's allowing the Lord to deal with our flesh. That is our walk of righteousness. And so Paul says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, But we have this treasure in earthen, of, earthen vessels. The treasure is Christ. The earthen vessel is us. That the excellence of the power may be from God and not from us. It's clear. It's not us producing the fruit. It's God. The Spirit of God producing the fruit. We are the earthen vessel. Yeah. This is how the Lord deals with the flesh. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of the Lord Jesus may be manifest in our body. Hallelujah. That life of the Lord Jesus being manifest in our body, it is the fruit of the Spirit. It's not a, it's not a personality. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? And somehow we can associate life in the Spirit. We see it through the eyes of the flesh, not the eyes of the Spirit. The life of Christ in us is not, it's, it's not, it's, it's not the outward, it's not an outward thing. It's, yes, it manifests in an outward way, but it's the fruit of the Spirit. You see, we, we, we can be as, how can I say, dy dynamic and charismatic and amazing. But not be showing the fruits of the Spirit. That's not the life of Christ. The life of Christ is the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. The life of Christ is manifest through the fruit of the Spirit. That is how we manifest the life of Christ. The life of Christ is not being happy all the time. It's not a Sunday smile. It's not a hallelujah brother. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is produced as the Lord deals with our flesh. And the Lord deals with our flesh just like the Word of God said, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our mortal flesh. This is how the fruit of the Spirit is produced in us. It's produced in us by a death to the flesh. And that death to the flesh is produced in us by the work of God. And that's how we say, carry our cross. You know, our, you, you see what I'm meaning? We, 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 it, it is my cross to carry. I must carry it. I do present myself to the Lord, but it's not my effort. It's the Lord dealing with my life. And you see, just like you can't manufacture the fruit of the Spirit, you cannot manufacture the dealing of the Lord either. You can't. What does the dealing of the Lord look like? Well, many, 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 many different ways. It doesn't have a particular, it has a particular aroma, but it doesn't have a particular set of circumstances. You know, you, you, you can be living in Camps Bay. That's a lonely place, isn't it? With death at work in you. You can be living in Kailicha with death at work in you. It's got nothing to do with those outward things. It's to do with the Spirit of God at work in us. And you see how powerful that is. Because you see how it unites the guy in Kim's Bay with the guy in Kailicha. Because somehow it's the work of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so... Um, Let's go to, we who live, verse 11, are always, always, that's what my Bible says, are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. Always. You know, if we want to have a life in the Spirit, if we're wanting to walk in the Spirit, there is no way around this passage of scripture we, we can't go past it you see if we go past it we go into the valley of legalism you hear what i'm saying 
We are, we are past the value of license. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't be here. Yes, sometimes we do. We fall into that value of license and we, we, we fall and we fail and we repent before the Lord and, and we humble ourselves before the sight of the Lord and, and, and He lifts us up out of that valley. He lifts us up and He puts us back on the road that we can begin to walk in the Spirit again. Our problem is more not going down that valley of license, but is going down that valley of legalism. And, and we, this is the solution. This is the, this is the peak that goes, this is the pass that goes between the two faces of the flesh, legalism and license. It's the cross. It is the cross and us allowing the Lord to deal with our flesh. What died on the cross? Flesh died on the cross. Where, what that death of flesh on the cross gave life to what? Life in the spirit. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. He said, follow me. He said, if you want to be my disciples, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. This is what he was talking about. He wasn't saying that we must make our lives a life of suffering because how can, how can a suffering that you make produce a fruit in the spirit? You can't. The suffering that we make just produce hardships in our life. And hardships in our life do not necessarily produce the fruit of the Spirit. If it's because that's what the Lord is doing, yes, it will produce the fruit of the Spirit. But the point is, it's the work of the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? And this is what we need to be able to grasp, to be able to, to walk in righteousness. So, did we read verse 12? It says, so that death is working in us, but life in you. So let's change us and to say that death is working in me so that life, the fruit of the Spirit, will be available to those around me. And that is our core. That is how we need to see walking in righteousness because if I don't see it like that, I'm actually just walking in my own strength. I'm, I'm back in legalism. And this is our challenge as Christians. So basically, let's skip over a little bit to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we've, we've read these verses before. But let's start from from verse 14. <coughs> but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Verse 15, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ amongst those who are being saved and amongst those who are perishing. To one we are the aroma of death leading to death and we are other the aroma of life leading to life. You know, the fruit of the Spirit we can, can we not equate it with an aroma? You know, where there's a, a, the fruit of the Spirit is like saying there's the aroma of Christ. The aroma of Christ that is coming from our lives. And if we are walking in righteousness, will the aroma of Christ not come from our lives? And the aroma of Christ that is coming from our lives is because of His work in us. Hallelujah! It's the way of the cross. It is life in the Spirit. It is walking in the Spirit. You see, so now I can see clearly what walking in the Spirit is. It's this that is walking in the Spirit. You know, speaking in tongues is great, but it's not walking in the Spirit. It's a gift of the Spirit, but in essence it's not walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is this that I'm talking about. That is walking in the Spirit. You know, having a gift of prophecy, a gift of knowledge, it's good, but it's a gift. It's not a life walking in the Spirit. The Lord can use anyone in any way that He wants, but that, those are gifts of the Spirit. It's not walking in the Spirit. I, I, can, I can speak in tongues. Uh, sometimes the Lord uses me to maybe even prophesy, but it doesn't mean that I'm, it's walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is, 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 is what, what I'm talking about. And you see, how long have we gone? We've got 
16 seconds left. 16. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, now I'm throwing. <laughs> yeah, so walking in righteousness is not an alone thing. It's not designed to be an alone thing. You know, when, when Christ fulfilled the law and when he took that barrier of the law away, it was a barrier between the book of Ephesians says one, two became, two became one talking about the Jews and the Gentiles, and, and through removing that barrier of the law, actually what was formed in the Spirit was, was the church. And the very foundation of us, the, 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 the next step after being given the work, being given the gift of righteousness is walking in righteousness. And when that barrier was removed, it, 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 in the Spirit, the church was formed because we could be part of, of the people of God. That's the church. And you see, to, 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 to walk in righteousness is designed that we do it together in the church. It's not an alone thing. It's, it's, it's together in the church. And it's, which means that all of us are tools in the hands of the Lord to be able to work each other to teach us to walk in righteousness. That's what we are. And, and, and you see, it's, it's this work that begins to happen in our lives where the Lord begins to deal with my flesh. Can I borrow you? Yeah. He begins to deal with my flesh, the flesh that is sticking out like this, and somehow stops us gelling. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's stopping us being unified. It's, it's my flesh that needs to die. And it's your flesh that needs to die. And it's the dealing of the Lord in me. And it's the dealing of the Lord in my brother. And somehow, this is going back to Ephesians now, where we begin to form a habitation for God in the Spirit. And then the Lord adds to this. You see, this is, is the church in the Spirit. The foundation we know, this is, this is the church in the Spirit. And it happens. And someone, the, the, the Lord adds. And you see, there, there's, there's, there's more. There's more. You see, he needs to deal with my life again, and he needs to deal with his life. And you see, we, we are beginning to form a habitation for God in the Spirit. Yes. And that is the purpose of the testimony of us walking in righteousness, yes. is that other people can see this testimony. Exactly. And, and, and you see, my, my brother Gary, he, he's, you know what I say, he's, he's not the fullness of Christ. Mm. And nor am I. Mm. And nor is Ben. Mm. But together, yeah. we are something more of the fullness of Christ. Oh, yeah, exactly. And that is our call. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. That is our call to be able to, together. And, and, and this is really important because that is the Lord's plan. That is how it's, if I can say it like that, designed to work in the Spirit. And, and, and you see now the church is, is not a program. It's not a place. It's not a name, but it's a people. And it's a people who are being formed in the Spirit on the foundation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified that is growing to be a habitation of God in the Spirit. We're learning to walk in the Spirit. We're learning the ways of the Spirit. We're learning to see in the Spirit. We're learning to understand the wisdom of the Spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's not the wisdom of man, but it's the wisdom of the Spirit. It's a spiritual wisdom. And that's what the Lord wants to deposit in our lives is the spiritual wisdom. That it, 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 it changes everything. And hallelujah, it's powerful because it brings unity. It brings direction. It brings purpose. We know why we're here. We're here to be a testimony to the Lord. None of us have arrived. None of us are perfect. We are all a work in progress. And what links us is the dealing of God in our lives. This is the foundation of righteousness under us. It's the finished work of Christ on the cross. And it's now this process that the Lord is building us and He's fitting us together. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> to, 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 to wrap up, it's, it's 
What does this mean to me? What does this mean to you? Okay. So it means that we don't need to lose heart. We don't need to lose heart. <laughs> to, to wrap up properly, I need to read these last few verses. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, but the inward man is being renewed day by day. We can be encouraged. We can be encouraged that it is, like Peter says, it is not, it is not strange when you face fiery trials. It is, not, it is not strange. Be encouraged. This is the work of God. This is the work of God in our lives. Be encouraged. You see how it changes everything. It changes our perspective. We're looking at the, we're looking through a different set of, <clears throat> we're looking at it differently. So we can be encouraged. Uh, verse 17, our light affliction is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. What does it bring for us? It brings perspective. Not only does it bring encouragement, but it brings perspective. Our light affliction is far more than what we are seeing today. The circumstance that you and I are battling with the Lord in is bringing something, is building a weight of glory for eternity, my brother or my sister. It's far more than what we see. It brings perspective. You know, often we face things and we are limited in our perspective of how we see them. But the Lord is using these things. I'm trying to go as quickly as I can. And it brings focus. In other words, it's, it's not the scene, but it's the unseen. It's the unseen. Um, reading from verse 18. But while we do not look at the things which are seen, we look at the things which are not seen. For these things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And the last point that I wanted to mention is about what does this mean to me? It comes from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. For the sake of time, being confident of this thing, that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. So in other words, it brings assurance to me that the Lord is in control and the Lord is building my life and the Lord is fitting my life into this people called the church, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. He is doing it. And so how, what, 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 do, what, do, what do I need to do? You know, that depends on, on where we are in this. What do we need to do? That depends. You know, for some, I think it needs, we need to lift up our hands that are hanging down. I think for some, it's to lift up our hands that are hanging down and to get a change in perspective and, and see once again in the Spirit. To see once again what is happening in the Spirit. Lift up those hands that are hanging down. Strengthen those feeble knees. It might mean that. For some, it might mean a refocus in the Spirit to get back on the road again. For some, it might mean rejoicing. To say, Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for how you are dealing with my life. Thank you, Lord. For some, it might mean a repentance. A repentance that needs to come to our hearts to say, Lord, somehow I have, I have lost faith. I have lost faith in what you're doing. And I see tonight and... Lord, I, I don't want to be in that, and I, I'm wanting to turn, and I'm wanting to, to, to see how you see once again. And for some, it might mean an acceptance and a surrender again. And this is the test of our faith, always the test of our faith, always. The Lord always tests our faith, because that's how we grow. That's how we grow. That's how we become qualified. We become qualified through the tests of our faith. And maybe the Lord is putting us in a place where we need to accept again. The circumstances that He has allowed in our lives. And we have to find that state of surrender again. Because it's not about those things. It's about how God is dealing with my life. To be able to form the fruits of the Spirit in me. Hallelujah. And that's where we will end tonight. And um, what to do next. I think what is good to do is just to bring our own hearts before the Lord. We'll close by just having one song where we will worship the Lord and we will just bring our own hearts before the Lord and respond in the way that the Lord puts on your heart to respond. But thank you, Lord, for your gospel. Hallelujah.